The Log. I'm Charles Purcell. I want to play something for you. It's only a couple of minutes, not too long. And then uh, we'll come back on the other side and, and we'll talk about it. All right, here it is. Hello, everyone. I just wanted to make a short video because I have something to say that I think is worth saying. I set out a lifetime ago to see the United States and look like I've come to the end of the road. Every place I go now looks like somewhere else I've been. My bucket list is empty. Kind of saddens me. You know, it's funny, you chase a dream your whole life. And then when you finally get there, the only thing you can say to yourself is, okay, what's next? What the hell? Well, one thing I learned for sure, if you live in America and you hate America, you're a damn fool. I've met the nicest people you'd ever want to meet along the way. People willing to share their table share their experiences. Strangers that will give you the shirt off their back. I don't care what anybody has to say. America is an exceptional country. And we are an exceptional people. People come from all over the world to see the beauty in the United States. I know. I've seen. You know, look at what we got. We got mountains, deserts, prairies, oceans, swamps, boreal forests and the freedom to see it all. It's all those race baiters and hate mongers out there that want to tear this country down and divide us? Well, you can kiss my American ass, because it ain't gonna happen. It's just not gonna happen. We see right through you. God bless America. You know, if you agree with what I'm saying, please do me a favor and share this video. I think we've been silent long enough, don't you? Thank you. So I didn't want to tell you anything about it. I wanted you to hear it just clean. So there it is. It's a guy named Bill Kane, who I don't know, never heard of before. But a friend of mine sent me this video. And I wanted to play it for you without any commentary at all. just wanted you to hear it straight out without me influencing you and see what you think. So, what did you think of that? I think a lot of people would be inspired by that and just 100% 100, 100 agree, share the video, make it go viral. All right. <laughs> you can probably guess what I'm thinking. Let's, uh, let's break this down. First of all, let me tell you, that it was sent to me by a friend who I love. He's conservative, more on kind of the libertarian side of the conservative wing. And I love the guy. I've known him since high school. Yes, it's the uh, rather cliche relationship. The high school buddy who becomes conservative uh, while you go in the other direction, but you're still high school buddies. Yeah. I'm sorry, call it cliche, but that's what it is. So I love my friend. Um, and he sent this to me. All right. So, all right, let's 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 break this thing down. Bill Kane, whoever he is. Uh, just to give you some idea, I checked out his Facebook page. And his cover photo is pretty... Uh, breathtaking landscape of mountains and Bill himself in the foreground with his sleeveless shirt. Nothing like the sleeveless tee. Of course, it's not really a tee anymore. It's not a t-shirt anymore when it's sleeveless, right? I guess it would be an eye shirt. <laughs> so he is a guy of about 65-ish and he is fit, man. He looks good. He's a fit 65. And by browsing his uh, timeline here on Facebook, he's a mountaineer and a nature enthusiast. It's all about nature. He loves nature. And uh, the, the video itself that we listened to, 
He's out in nature, but you may have heard the babbling brook behind him. So he's a good-looking guy. His, uh, so that's his cover photo. His profile picture, interestingly, is a picture of Uncle Sam kneeling in a pew in a church, praying with his head bowed. <laughs> so, oh, see, there I am. There I am being mocking and snarky again. I'm sorry. But if your profile picture is Uncle Sam kneeling in a pew, praying with his head bowed, I don't know. I think it says a little something about you. You're telling your story. I admire somebody who can tell their story in a profile picture. It must be nice to be able to sum up your beliefs that easily. I'll have to think of, of a new profile picture for myself that really sums me up in one picture. you got the profile, Uncle Sam, and then the cover, Mountains. So, okay, that's who this guy is. And I did. I, I scrolled through his feed for quite a while and couldn't find much of anything else. It's kind of what this guy is about. He's about nature and about murka. That's about it. That's all I could find. To my friend who sent this to me, if you're listening, I love you. But I gotta, I gotta break this thing down here. All right, let's break this thing down, shall we? Opening scene: babbling brook. This guy steps into the picture, into frame. Hello, everyone. Hello. I just wanted to make a short video because I have something to say that I think is worth saying. All right. I set out a lifetime ago to see the United States. Nice. And look like I've come to the end of the road. Oh, wow. Every place I go now looks like somewhere else I've been. Hmm? My bucket list is empty. Kind of saddens me. What are you getting at? You know, it's funny. You chase a dream your whole life. And then when you finally get there, the only thing you can say to yourself is, okay, what's next? What the hell? See, so far I'm not sure where he's going. Uh... <laughs> I don't know how this little intro relates to the uh, topic coming up. His his own bucket list. <laughs> he's come to the end of the road. Like I told you, he's he's a very fit, very buff, like 65-year-old. He's got a long way to go yet. The end of his bucket list. I, I don't under, I don't know. I can't relate to this guy at all yet. <laughs> And, and the fact that he, he set out to see all of America, and he's seen it all. Are we supposed to admire him for this? He doesn't tell us how he did it, how he came to be so fortunate. He's obviously privileged in ways that many aren't. I imagine, if I would ask him, he would say, well, anybody could do what I did. All they have to do is work hard. Well, and, and there we'd have a tough time even starting a conversation. Because that... <laughs> That's a that's their most powerful myth. And when I say they, yeah, I'm lumping him into a group already. Sorry. It's a popular myth. It's the popular myth of people who love America. It's the popular myth among the conservative libertarian types that anybody can do what they did. They just have to work as hard as I do. All right, well, let's not... Uh, Let's let him have his say here. Let's get let's get back to some of this here. Well, one thing I learned for sure, if you live in America and you hate America, you're a damn fool. Oh, here we go. Okay, come on. Um, <laughs> all right. I th okay, so now he's talking to me. This guy is talking to me. My friend who sent me this video is talking to me. This is another ancient trope. This is pure Archie Bunker coming out here. Those of us on the left, some of us farther than others on the spectrum, are always accused of hating America. As though somehow fighting for the rights of the marginalized, the poor, is hating America. Opposing foreign entanglements invading and occupying other countries, opposing corporate greed, is somehow interpreted as hating America. Well, is it just because we're, we always seem to be complaining? Because I'll give you that. I'll concede that. 
I'm complaining all the damn time. <laughs> but if, if that's the measuring stick, who complains more than people on the right? They, they complain about us. They complain about political correctness, and they complain about Christians being persecuted. They find all sorts of things to complain about. The current occupant is the complainer-in-chief. That's all he does is complain. It just depends on what you're complaining about. And when conservatives complain, it's things like, uh, I want a haircut. I want more freedom. I want to be able to keep my money. I don't have to be nice to you. Let me be a racist without criticizing me. <laughs> you criticized me. While those on the left are complaining about lack of justice. For black people not to be harassed and killed at the hands of police. For the earth to not be depleted of all its resources. Begging industry and government policy to stop the madness of CO2 emissions and the resulting climate change. So this makes us complainers? This, this says we hate America? We don't love America? Well, obviously it says just the opposite, because if the right is complaining about us and whining about their own lost opportunity to do whatever the hell they want, whenever the hell they want, regardless of the consequences, well then who loves America? I ask you. Which of those sides loves America? One of them loves America, the other loves their own damn convenience. America is a, is a trophy wife to them. I've met the nicest people you'd ever want to meet oh. along the way. America has nice people. People okay. willing to share their table. Yeah. Share their experiences. Okay, good. Wonderful. Strangers that will give you the shirt off their back. I don't care what anybody has to say. America is an exceptional country. And we are an exceptional people. You know what? Every liberal activist can say the exact same thing. Ask, ask anybody who really gets out there. Activists, protesters, the camaraderie, the strangers giving you the shirt off their back. The stranger who shows up with a gallon of milk, pouring it in your eyes after you've been pepper sprayed. Yeah, this is not a quality unique to your side here, Bill Kane. All right. What, what, what else you got to say? People come from all over the world to see the beauty in the United States. Sure. I know. I've seen. Oh, you've seen it. Okay. You know, look at what we got. We got mountains, <laughs> deserts, prairies, oceans, <laughs> swamps, boreal forest, huh? and the freedom to see it all. Wait. Okay. Wait. 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 <laughs> Okay, first of all, the freedom to see it all, that's your bubble, Bill. If you think that everyone watching this video has the freedom to travel to exotic locations at will as much as they want, cross off every item on their bucket list, as you've said you've done, well, there again, that just, that just goes back again to your idea that anybody can achieve what you achieved if they just work hard. You're ignoring an entire set of facts and factors that impact people's lives. You're completely just dismissing any sense of social inequity. You're just assuming everybody's got the same life you've got. If only they just grab it by the tail. You're living in a dream world here, Bill. Whew. And then... And then so we love America and it's exceptional because it has mountains and deserts and forests and swamps. Come on. You know, Bill, I, I love those things too. And I admire your love of nature. I'm not sure why you're not a climate activist instead of just a blowhard who's crossing off lists on your own private bucket list if you love nature so much. And uh, can you name me one other country on the whole damn planet that doesn't have these things? And this, is, this is like a grandparent running around showing pictures of his grandkid. This is the most beautiful baby ever in the world. Um, come on, man. This is the very definition of chauvinism. 
<laughs> America is a beautiful place. Of course it is. To set it apart as this shining city on the hill is just pure poppycock and pure chauvinism. I, I don't know how people get this way. I don't know how their brains get this way. I honestly don't. Bill, you got me stumped. This is making no sense so far. If you're trying to make a point about loving or hating America, well, you haven't defined exactly what you mean by America yet, except it's afforded you your own privilege, and it's pretty. So if you got, you got something a little more to say here, let's, uh, let's see where you're going with this. It's all those race baiters. Oh, here we go. And hate mongers out oh, there. Okay. want to tear this country down <laughs> and divide us. Now, okay, now. Well, you can kiss my American ass because it ain't going to happen. Yeah, I'll kiss your American ass all right. It's just not going to happen. Uh, okay, so. We see right through you. Okay, we see right through you. God bless America. The, uh, the, uh, now we get down to it. In the, fi in the final seconds of his little video, now we get right down to it. We are, we are race baiters. Now he's using some language. What the f does that mean? A race baiter. So with one very charged, very offensive word, he dismisses an entire movement, an entire idea. The very idea that there's any racial inequality in this country is dismissed with one word, race baiter. And not only are we race baiters, we're hate mongers. You know, I can't speak for anyone else, but I don't hate anybody. If you would get off your mountaintop and step outside your privilege for just a second and join a protest, you would find more love among the protesters than you're going to find anywhere else. You're not going to tell me, Bill, that if you've been wronged by someone, you're not going to fight for yourself? I'm guessing you probably would. In fact, you're doing it in this video. You don't think by name-calling like this, by calling someone a race-baiter, isn't a little race-baiting in itself? You don't think that calling someone a hate-monger, accusing someone of being a hate-monger, you don't think that displays a little hate-mongering in itself? Yeah, he waited till the final seconds of his little video here. But now we know where Bill is coming from. It's all those race baiters Man. and hate mongers out there that want to tear this country down and divide us. Yeah. Well, you can kiss my American ass. Yeah. Because it ain't going to happen. No, it's not. What is that? It's just not going to happen. What does that mean exactly? We see right through you. God bless America. You know, if you agree with what I'm saying, please do me a favor and share this video. I think we've been silent long enough. Don't you? Oh, boy. Thank you. N nice little button on there. Throw in a little silent majority. There's a dog whistle for you. We see right through you. Who's, who's dividing us there? You just accused us of dividing America. But you're the one using all the us and them language. You're the one name calling. We're, we're calling out injustice. Bill, you had, I don't know, how long is this, how long is this video? It's a couple of minutes. You can say an awful lot in a couple of minutes and you chose to say nothing really, except to display your own privilege, your own chauvinism. And then in the final seconds, I guess you can't hide it anymore. If you think fighting for justice is race baiting and hate mongering and then you feel just quite at ease saying things like we see right through you and we're not having it and you can kiss my american ass so your ass is american but my ass isn't american is that what you're implying there bill you spent most of your time saying nothing except displaying your own ignorance and then you took the final seconds to really show your hand, to really show your colors, to really show who you are. There's nothing inspiring about this. There's nothing good about this. 
And, and while we're at it, if you love America so much, you want to define what you mean by that? What is America to you, Bill? Because to me, it sounds like you love your own life. You love your own privilege. Is that it? Maybe you love your neighbors. You love your family. You did mention strangers who'd give you the shirt off their back. Yeah, that's, that's everywhere, Bill. Get out of your bubble. That doesn't make America exceptional. So if your ass is so American, can you describe what that means? Does it leave red, white, and blue stripes in your jockeys? Another, I got to say kind of a dim-witted thing he says about how America is exceptional. Now that term has a specific meaning in political theory. It's not just the colloquial definition of exceptional. Oh, we're extra nice and good. No, to be an exceptional nation has implications in political theory about a very singular, powerful, and necessary role that the nation state plays in relation to other nation states. So, Bill, a little free advice. Uh, don't use that term anymore because you don't know what it means. And anybody who does know what it means will think you're an idiot, will discover that you're an idiot. And let's, let's stick with this defining America thing. If your ass is American and you love America and we hate America, well, what are you talking about exactly? The mountains? Do you think we hate the mountains? No, you know what? We love mountains and we love streams just as much as you do, Bill. We love the ocean's teeming shore. We're down with all of that. So I'm looking for, I'm looking for a definition of America here, Bill. It's history? Do you love its history? Well, you got you to gotta take a, a pretty selective look. You really got to cherry pick history to love America's history. I've mentioned a couple things that I love about American history, namely baseball and jazz. <laughs> so, yeah, there's nobody loves America more than I do if we're going to define it by jazz and baseball. So I'm not sure if you're talking about its history. I'm pretty sure you know about slavery. I mean, you're not that dumb, are you, Bill? You must know that there were millions of people living on the continent when the Europeans showed up, right? That they had their own nations. They had their own history, their own culture, their own forms of government. You know this, right? You're a smart guy. You know that the Europeans killed them, right? Went to war with them, took their land. So if it's history that's defining America, yeah, you got to be uh, you got to be very self-servingly selective. So I'm still looking. I'm still trying to figure out, Bill, what is it you love about America? Do you love its power? The fact that it's a powerful nation? We have the most powerful armies in the world? The way we use that power? If that's the case, then just be out front. Say, yeah, I love America's power. I love that we're the number one most powerful country in the world and we can have our way. And I love the power that it gives me. I love all the advantages that U.S. power provides me. If that's what you love about America and that's what makes your ass American, well, come out and say it. Because I suspect that's what it is. You love that America is powerful. And you love the advantages that that power gives you. That's my guess. I could be wrong. Tell me I'm wrong, Bill. Because I'm trying like hell to figure out what you mean when you say America. Is it the form of government? Is that what America means to you? Because now we're getting close to what I love about America. I really kind of love the Constitution. Yeah, it's got problems. Had problems from the beginning. It was written by slaveholders and it, it codified slavery. Yes, I understand that. But the general concept of democratic representative government checks and balances in the government, limits of power. There are a lot of good things. There are a lot of good things about United States government on paper. For the most part, with a couple of really glaring exceptions, the Electoral College has to go. The makeup of the U.S. Senate has to go. There are a couple of big problems. But the basic foundation, the Constitution, has a lot going for it. Now, the actual government the way it has evolved over the years, especially the power of the two parties, the Tweedledee and Tweedledum Democrats and Republicans, 
the actual government and the way it functions has strayed far off the path of what the idea makes possible. So I love the idea of America, the ideal of America. I love it every bit as much as you do. But I don't, I don't think that's what you're saying. I, I don't get that. You're not giving any indication that you love the idea of America. You love the mountains and the swamps and the nice people. And you love your privilege. And you call that America. And worse, you name call and accuse. I mean, these are serious accusations. Race baiters, hate mongers who want to divide America. You can't make an accusation any stronger than that. And if you're going to make an accusation like that, you better give me something to back it up. And you gave me nothing. You want this video to go viral? I think you're pathetic, Bill. Do I hate you? No, I don't hate anybody. I love and I hate ideas, and I think your ideas suck. But you know what, Bill? I want you to be happy. I want you to be fulfilled. Because making you unhappy isn't going to make anybody else's life better. I'm a lefty. I want those who are underserved and forgotten and marginalized to be given what's rightfully theirs, to find justice, justice under the law, opportunities in the marketplace for a job, a house, education for their kids. I just want good things for them that they've been denied. I want basic rights for all of us. And that includes you, Bill, no matter how much you name call, no matter how much you misinterpret those on the other side of the political spectrum and misrepresent us, I want all these things for you, too. But your problem is you've already got them. You've already got every opportunity. And you're so blind to the fact that not everybody does. And you think us fighting for those opportunities will somehow take yours away? It doesn't work that way, Bill. And your little video, all it does is reveal your privilege, your ignorance, and your bigotry. Sorry, Bill. I love you. I want what's best for you. I want what's best for everybody. And you don't get it. Your video, Bill, is stupid. This episode of The Log is available right now wherever you find your podcasts, including... Apple Podcasts, iHeart, YouTube, and the podcast source. Enter Charles Bursell Presents in the search window. Or best yet, go to charlesbursell.com. There you'll find this and all the other series in the podcast family. Follow, comment, and contact me on Facebook and Twitter. Thanks to our flagship terrestrial station, Riverwest Radio, riverwestradio.com. Theme music composed and performed by Peter Donalds. From the New Arts and Media Studios in Milwaukee, I'm Charles Purcell. <laughs>